guys, it is April from Getting Hooker With It. Today I'm doing a very impromptu video. I am going to do the stay at home reading rush um, tag and TBR, so let's get into it. I was not planning on joining the stay at home reading rash. I'm not exactly sure why. I've been really focused on my quarantine-a-thon, which is coming in May. It's a whole month-long read-a-thon that I'm doing and I'm hosting. Um, so I was kind of focused on that, but then I thought, why couldn't I do both? Of course I can do both. And so here I am. Um, shameless plug, I will um, link in the description box below the video I did about quarantine-a-thon the prompts and everything. Uh, but today we are talking about the stay at home reading rash. I love Ariel Bassett. She's so happy and joyous and I just feel like she's someone that would be so much fun to go and have a beer with. Um, so I am definitely going to join in. Um, the readathon lasts from Thursday until Saturday, short and sweet. And I do also have to preface this with, I have a little baby roaming around the library. Little Nora just woke up from her nap um, and uh, I was planning out my answers to the questions and stuff while she was napping and just timing didn't happen where she was still napping. So she's going to be here in her cute little self. Um, so let's get straight into the tag questions. The first question is how is your reading going while staying at home? Okay, so at the beginning of all of this, like mid-March is when we started staying at home here in Ottawa. Um, it was not going well. The books that I was reading were good, were great in fact, but I was really struggling. I think I was just so stressed out um, because this is unprecedented times. There's strange, strange times. And so I was like glued to the news in a way that was truly unhealthy. I don't exactly know why I did that, but it's getting better and I've been reading some fantastic books. Um, so that's very good. It's getting much better. Question number two, where have you been reading at home? I mostly read in my bed. I will put here, Nora's right here. Nora, do you wanna come say hi? We'll put Nora down for the night around seven inch. <laughs> Yes, around seven o'clock. You go to sleep around seven. And then I'll go downstairs, get a glass of water, and go up and just sit in bed for the rest of the night and read. I try very hard to not get glued to my phone because I can spend all of those hours, you know, looking up news and stuff. But I'm getting much better, and that's where I do most of my reading now is in bed at night. It's wonderful. Question number three is, what was the best book that you've read during isolation? Um, yeah, this was actually hard to decide because I've read so many good ones, but this book just like, I don't know, it filled my heart in such a way. It's Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. This is a nonfiction book about a therapist who goes to therapy, and I really enjoyed this. It just goes to show that therapists are just human beings like you and I, and they struggle with very similar things. They have a better toolkit, that is for sure, uh, because they've trained for it. But it is such an honest account of this woman's breakup. She goes to therapy because her boyfriend very suddenly breaks up with her and says it's because he doesn't want to have a kid around. She has like an eight-year-old son or something. And um, she goes to therapy for that reason. But as you do in therapy, as time goes on, you realize that there's so much more that she needed to explore and that were underlying feelings that she felt the whole time. It's so, so good. And you know what? I think I'm going to reread this because there were so many moments where I was like, oh yeah, I got to underline that. And then I just never would because I didn't want to, you know, mark on the book. So I need to do something. I need to get post-it notes or something because chock full of wisdom and such a good kind of thing to read right now when there's a lot of stress. I just loved it so much. Okay, question number four. What is your favorite feel-good book? 
Um, so if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that I mostly read um, non-feel-good books. I read historical fiction, I read thrillers and horror, and like, most of those things don't feel very good. Um, so the first book that came to mind was Bridget Jones' Diary. I mean, it's a classic almost. It's not a classic, I realized. But um, it is basically a retelling of, of a classic, Pride and Prejudice. So here we meet Bridget, who is a single 30-something-year-old woman living in England. And of course, she meets her Mr. Darcy in here. She meets her Wickham. It is really, it's such a great uh, retelling of Pride and Prejudice, and it just gives me all the feels. Question five book you wish you could buy or borrow from the library? Um, I think the most recent book that I've added to my Amazon wish list, which I will link below, is I think it's called My Dark Vanessa or Her Dark Vanessa. My Dark Vanessa. Everyone's talking about this book. I was recently chatting with Julie from A Girl in a Book and she was in the middle of reading it or had just read it. Um, and it's apparently very, very good and very dark though. Like a lot of people are needing to take breaks while reading it because it's so emotional and it's a debut and just everyone has said that it's fantastic. So I'd really like to read that. I imagine the wait list from the library would be very long. So I'd probably be buying it instead of waiting for it from the library. Question number six, an author you'd like to shout out during this time? And I really, I'm so glad that she added this question to this tag because oh, publishers are having a rough time right now because people aren't going out as much. Well, they're not going to bookshops right now. It's very hard to get the word out about the books that they had ready to publish. And I think a lot of publishers are putting some of their books that they were going to release on hold for a little while because they want to be able to build that hubbub and that, you know, hype. Um, so a book that was very, very recently released that I read and adored was The Lost Orphan or The Foundling by Stacey Hall. So in the UK, it's called The Foundling. In America and Canada, it's called The Lost Orphan. And it is amazing. So good. Um, this is about a woman who, it, it's a historical fiction book um, that I've already lent to my mom because it was so good. Um, it's historical fiction about a woman who uh, has a child out of wedlock. Now this takes place, I think, in the 18th century, I want to say. And she has this baby she knows that she needs to give it up and there's a place called the foundling hospital where you can bring your baby and they won't adopt the baby out they will take care of the child until you're ready to come back and claim the child and so she does this years later I think it's six years later she saved enough money to go and claim her child back and someone using her name has already claimed the child it was amazing. The writing was fantastic. Very gothic, dark, but wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So I really want to shout out Stacey Halls. And I have another book of hers on my shelves called The Familiars that I really want to read. And then, okay, the last question is, what is your Reading Rush TBR? So let us share that. We have how many challenges? Four challenges for the Reading Rush TBR. The first challenge is to read a book with a house on the cover. Mm. Now, I have three books here that I'm going to share with you. I will not be reading three books in three days. That is like impossible. But if I was going to, I'd probably read The War I Finally Won. This is a sequel to The War That Saved My Life, um, which I read in middle grade March. And I adored that book. It is about... Um, World War II, we meet two children who are moving from London, I believe, to the countryside, which a lot of people did. They sent their children to the countryside because they knew the war was going to be imminent and just ravage London. The bombs were going to drop, and they did. So they sent their kids to the countryside. And this is actually a reprieve for Ava or Ada um, because her mother is horrible to her. 
in London. She never leaves her house because she has a club foot and her mother is embarrassed by her. Horrible. So she goes to the countryside and this is the continuation of her story. There's a little house on there. I think that's a barn. But that's fine. <laughs> anyway, it could be a house. We don't know. Um, it's a house for the horses at the very least. I'll probably read The War I Finally Won if I'm able to get through the other two books um, on this list. So the second challenge is to read a book in the same room the whole time. Now I just mentioned to you guys that I really read mostly in bed anyway. So I read in my bedroom. I most likely will be reading the next two books in there anyway. So I'm not going to share with it, share you that, share those books with you quite yet. Um, number three, challenge number three is to read a book set somewhere you wish you could go. Now I need to preface this. <laughs> oh, it's this one. Um, I'd love to go to London. I've never been to Europe and Barry and I have been really wanting to go. I don't know whether we'll go with Nora and bring her along or whether we'll wait until she's a little older and then go on our own. But I'd love to go to London. I would not love to go to London during World War II, which is when The Splendid and the Vile is set. Yay. This is a nonfiction book by Eric Larson that just recently came out and it is about Winston Churchill and the London Blitz. It's about how he dealt with the war, um, the media, you know, the citizens of London and how he came out um, victorious on the other side of it. It's very, very good. And I am enjoying it. I am early on. I'm only like 60 something pages in. And that's because I picked up a couple other books. I, it's the type of book that's so heavy that I don't feel like I can just read this. I need to be reading other things at the same time. Um, so there's that. I'll be reading that for where I'd like to go. Definitely not London during the Blitz though. London post Blitz. Um, and then challenge four is read a book that will make you smile. And so for this one, I guess I could have chosen The War I Finally Won because that definitely makes me smile. But I am currently reading this book and I just picked it up yesterday and it's, it makes me so happy. It's Jojo Moyes, The Giver of Stars. Now I didn't even know that she wrote historical fiction whatsoever. I was kind of surprised, but this is fantastic. This takes place in the 30s during the Depression. We follow several women who join Ele Eleanor Roosevelt's aim to bring books across the country into all sorts of places where there isn't a lot of um, reading material and literacy. And so we follow these women in the South, I think, who are bringing these books around. And they're going on horseback. It's so... Good. I I just started reading it. I'm only like 50 pages in, but I'm loving it. I'm particularly loving the storyline of Alice, who moved from England trying to escape a very stuffy family, um, and she moves to the South, Kentucky. She uh, marries this man. She marries an American, and she has this idea that he's going to be so like forward thinking, and in the end, he's just like very also quite stuffy and um will do whatever his father says and doesn't ever disagree with his father and his father lives with them it's just like the worst case scenario and so she signs up to be a librarian and i'm i'm loving it so this is definitely bringing me a lot of joy and i'm smiling throughout it and those are the books that i'm planning on reading for the stay at home reading rush. Let us know in the comments below, are you guys going to be joining the reading rush? Yes. I hope so. It's a lot of fun. Oh gosh, violent chat. <laughs> I will talk with you soon. Bye guys.